Hey, it's me again, Michael, your favorite thought provoker. And we're in the middle of the series on team or team building models that are standard in the industry and that might or might not be so helpful for your team. And in general, every model is wrong. Some models are helpful, some are not so helpful. The idea is to find aspects within the model that are helpful for your current situation. And the model that we're going to look at today is a T7 model by Eichinger and Lombardo, which was published in 1995. And uh, the, to start right off, the T7 model has its name because there are seven aspects to this model and all seven aspects start with a T. Now my personal opinion is that uh, the T's are pretty much shoehorned in order to create the fancy model name that should not diminish the fact that this model has some interesting aspects that we want to start to look at right now. Okay, so what does the model start with? The idea is that we start with something, I'll start down here, thrust. And what is thrust as defined in this model? A vision and an objective that is compelling to move the team forward. So in other models we might be calling this a vision or a mission statement for the team. And uh, the thrust, as based on this model, it needs to be managed, it needs to be clear, and a team should be committed, and not just the team, but the surrounding organization as well, towards this thrust. And uh, when we have that one established, we get into the level of the same word without an H, trust. Now we all know, or have an understanding of what trust is. Um, in this model, trust is truthful communication, both within and around the team, trust in the actions of the team, and trust within the team, so among the team members. So we have three dimensions about how we talk, how we act, and how we interact. And all those aspects of trust should be warranted in order to have a good and stable team. And the next one in this model is talent. What people do we put into the team? How do we grow the people in the team? How do we use the abilities of the team members? And uh, what is the best way? to get value out of the things that the team members do. So there's, depending on what we model we are using, whether we are self-organized or have external controls over who is doing what, it's quite important that talent is properly utilized within the team. And then after we have those things, we can talk about teaming in terms of how do we actually collaborate effectively? How do we manage our time and even material resources within the team? What are our working agreements within the team? Uh, how does the team learn? How does the team make decisions? How does the team solve conflicts? How does the team feel that kind of atmosphere within the team? How does a team manage their process? That could both be a command and control process or it could be self-organization and continuous inspect and adaption. And this is not as important for the model itself as it is about raising the questions. Uh, do we have proper teaming? And the fifth T is this, what they call task skills. So what is the task level of the team? That is, uh, can we focus on getting things done? 
Um, are we sufficiently flexible to change the work in a way that allows us to actually succeed? Can we measure how much progress we're making and are we moving in the right direction? And are we actually delivering any goods? Do we have tangible outcomes that do help the organization? And those five things are basically at the core of the T7 model. And then uh, we get to the surrounding things and that is um, that what they call so the team leader fit or I might just be calling this leadership and it wouldn't start with a T uh, but basically this is a, if we do have a team leader and how suitable are they for bringing those things out in the team how are they getting the team to collaborate, how are they helping the team to reach their goals. If the team leader is appropriate for this team, then we have a good team leader fit. If the team leader cannot handle the situation of the team or doesn't have a team excel and move forward, then we might want to have a discussion about what should be changed in how the team leader works with the team. And finally, we have the team support, or you could also call it the team's environment. Team support. That is, how does the surrounding organization support the team's core five T's? That means, uh, does the su surrounding organization provide positive incentives for the teams to actually go somewhere? Does this organization resolve impediments which stop the team from resolve, reaching the goals? Does the organization provide sufficient resources, sufficient training, sufficient information that the team can actually be successful? And all of this together would then be our 7T model. The idea of the 7T model is to find out what can we do and to purposefully check off do we have any soft spots within our team that we didn't think of and address them directly. It's up to you if you find value in this tool, please take advantage of it, do your own research of what's behind it and if I could get you to like this video, please leave a like and you might want to check subscriptions below because if you're not subscribed yet, you might miss out on the subsequent videos in the team building models and a lot of additional content which is also to come in the future. Okay, have a good one. Be seeing you.